while this integral is the part a, so you need to multiply it with the indicator function. Indicator function of the a uh, is the expectation of y, y multiplied by the indicator function. So any random variable, any random variable that satisfies these two conditions is going to be the conditional expectation of y given g. So we proved that if you give me a random variable and a sigma field g, then you can always have such a random variable. And that random variable is also going to be unique actually. Otherwise, the conditional expectation not only exists, but you know uh, it's unique as well. Uh, what were the key properties of it? So, just quickly recalling the properties. What were some of the properties of it? The initial expectation is linear. In other words, if you have uh, some ax plus the y given g, this is same as the times of the conditional expectation of x given g plus b times of the conditional expectation y given g. Okay. x and y are the random variables. And obviously, I'm assuming that these two conditional expectations are this one. And what was the second? So imagine I have a random variable x that is independent, independent of the sigma field G. Okay. Who is going to tell me what is the precise definition of a random variable being independent from a sigma field? What do you mean by that? You can have intuitive idea, I have nothing to do with the yeah. so What do you mean by that precisely? Alright. So what you can do is that take a Borel set and compute its inverse and then okay. That set and that set and the any set in the A are independent. Independent, independent with respect to the expectation of x given g. So it should be expectation of x. So, no. so if x is independent of g, you know this g is not going to add anything into the expectation, so it's going to be the expectation of x. Variable. I mean, if you want to recall, 
Okay, so Z is um, is what? Play, taking out what is known. So you call it taking out what is that you need every day. So you should have all the time in your head actually. Yeah. Sorry, go on with the other. This subfield takes subfield with the edge. Yes. On the tower property. Tower property. Okay. Tower property. So imagine uh, I have a subfield I have H that is a okay, that is a sub sigma field of G. Okay? And I know that G is a sub sigma field of uh, underlying F. Then the conditional expectation. Y given, shouldn't write it necessarily, Y given the bigger sigma field, given the smaller sigma field is equal to the conditional expectation of Y given smaller sigma field. I, I think we also discussed 
discussed, if you remember, when we were having our discussions on discrete term finance, a little bit of that. You also defined that if you have, say, a binomial model that is modeling you know, the evolution of a stock actually, that model is going to be, that model can contain arbitrage. Okay. So you can, what do you mean by arbitrage it? In other words, you can make an investing strategy, you can invest in bonds in the stock in such, such a, a way such a portfolio. Okay, that you take nothing out of your pocket in the beginning okay, and you expect a gain in the future actually. So you're expecting a free lunch. Okay? So that would be roughly what you call the arbitrage. Okay? And then we, 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 we said that you know how we can make this this model that models the evolution of a stock an arbitrage free model like okay. how we can make it an arbitrage free model in other words in this model arbitrage shouldn't exist okay. so what we did or what we usually do is that you discount the stochastic stock price process okay. and you construct a new probability measure okay what you call a risk neutral probability measure I mean, it's, it's, it's okay, I mean, if you don't understand most of the things that you have, that's what I say. But one thing that you have a stock price process, okay, that can go crazy, that can allow people to make unfair money, okay. So you can prevent, you know, the existence of an arbitrage in a financial process if you turn that process into a martingale actually, okay. So if, if you can turn that process into a martingale, the martingale is going to make sure that no such, you know, arbitrage should exist. And for example, one of the way, probably in this course or maybe in the next course that we will do, we'll see that if you have a stock price process and you discount it, then with respect to some suitable measure, you know, uh, that basically becomes a martingale, a martingale process, a fair process, okay, and uh, in that process there is no, you know, chance of existence of the arbitrage actually, okay. So the martingales in the finance breaks the fairness actually, okay. So therefore, you know, uh, when we develop theories, we, 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 you know, assume every agent in the market or the you know, participant of the market as a rational person. So we, we develop the rational theory. Okay? So therefore you will see that in finance, market gears play the pivotal role because you want to turn your process. So you are not saying that no one should make the profit. You know, everyone should make the profit. But, you know, you know, he shouldn't have some sneaky way to make some extra money. In other words, you know, it shouldn't be the case that there, you know, one of the participants in the market has some information which other doesn't have, and due to that, you know, you have a upper hand. What do you call an upper hand actually? Okay. So, you know, turn things fair. You quite often, uh, practitioners quite often want to turn their things into uh, martingale. So, martingale becomes a very interesting kind of process. So, what's a martingale? So I would like to define what is uh, definition. So the notion or the notation for the martingale is going to be this. So the process M, which is Mn, so it's a discrete time process. We have also the Mini's time version of it. Okay. You know, why we are focusing on at the moment discrete time, that is pretty important that we should go at least in the beginning some view of the discrete time. Though we are interested in the you know, continuous time and stuff, okay, but it's good to have some intuition from the discrete time and then go to the continuous time. Anyway, so a process MN is, is, a, is a martingale, okay with respect to a filtration okay. filtration a 
fan if uh, this process must be integrable, in other words, you must be able to compute its you know, expectation, it must be finite. Of this uh, 
notion of particle for one interpretation I gave you already. So if x and xn are x and you know x and y are the martingale processes. Okay. 
So what would be the definition of it? So it's going to be Mn biomatic gel property. Okay. And I want to show that this conditional expectation. Okay. So you have this particle property. And now they take the conditional expectation on both sides. Or the expectation on the both sides. You're going to take the expectation on the both sides, what are you going to get? Or, um, or take the conditional expectation. Yes. Take the conditional expectation. Okay. So you can have it. Take the, take the expectation on the both sides. So you're going to take the expectation on the both sides and you have a conditional expectation mn plus 1 given fn here, let's write it explicitly, mn plus 1 given fn, what would be this quantity? Thank you. 